This is the Elven Trading Post District Bundle. This build has a two foot by two foot footprint. Uh, this collection of pieces is focused on some of our more elegant building possibilities, elements. Uh, it has a lot of the green roofs. It has our more elegant wall options, the uh, tavern walls and posts, the manor house walls and posts. It has the parquet floors. Uh, it has sculpted cobblestone floors. It has our sea walls. It has four terrain trays. It has a collection of our um, scaffolding. And it has features the elven boughs, so our elven facade collection to uh, dress the whole thing up. There are also, uh, we have these pieces left over, so you have even more building possibilities. And this build is supposed to feel very vertical. It's supposed to feel sort of light and airy with a lot of outdoor open space, uh, interesting visual flow to it, a little more artistic uh, as would be appropriate for an elven training post. So let's, uh, let's dive in and see what all the details are. So first, this thing is built on uh, four terrain trays. So it's our new uh, shoreline breakers terrain trays. We've got two straights and a uh, convex here. Uh, underneath this, we have a concave. Uh, and they all have the water texture overlays, so that has a nice um, textural sheen to it that kick off the speculars and it looks like real water. Uh, so out here we've built some docks, so there's uh, different piers sort of jetting out, so the ships have somewhere to, uh, to dock and unload. Uh, we're using the scaffolding platforms, the uh, four inchers here, uh, just to build a standard dock, and that flows up right into the uh, two by four uh, wood floors, a couple of those are biscuited together, and they're up on the same pilings to make an elevated platform transitioning between them using the uh, secret door panels. Those flat panels are just useful for everything. Over here, we've got uh, the narrow platforms, two of the narrow platforms biscuited together, uh, making a really long little narrow jetty, and that has railings around it. The idea is a big ship could sort of dock against this and unload. Uh, so it's got the hanging ladders dropping down to water level, uh, I've got the rivet biscuit inserts there you could use to uh, moor your boat, um, and it's being held up by one of the wooden stair pillars. And we have a little step, stepping right up to it. And then back here, we have our, our last dock is just another four inch platform. It's got the 25 millimeter steps dropping right down into the water. So good for unloading like a little rowboat, something. And then that feeds into, we got a couple of the little corner stairs here and uh, the one inch risers here. So we're using these cobblestone risers to connect off the uh, seawall, sort of extend that little causeway there. All right, so speaking of seawalls, we've got six of them in the set here. So they are double-sided. One side has this uh, sewer drain sculpted in, uh, and the other side has these two little bastions sticking out, and they have pull accessory holes in them, so you can dress them up, you can put the hoist on there, whatnot. And this is two inches wide, so you can put a uh, scaffolding platform in there, or a two-inch riser, or any of our two-inch wide pieces. Um, and it's, they both have the same height. This is, uh, it's one floor height down to either of these, so you can rest uh, floors on them, get them up to this height. And in this case, uh, we're using them to hold up. We have a terrain tray. Our fourth terrain tray is under there. It's being held up by a combination of the 25 millimeter, the one inch risers are under there, the four of those under there, and then the edges, the back sides of the seawalls are holding that up. Uh, in this case, the prototype's not done, so we have a little uh, piece of foam holding that up, but the, these, uh, these floors will be full floor height. So then once you, when you pop the terrain tray on there, you build on top of it, and then everything gets nice and smooth and level. Uh, also, building in line, speaking of smooth and level, we have, this is the uh, large backfill piece. So it has one side is cobblestone, the other side is dirt, so matching our uh, sort of packed dirt or cobblestone, and that fits in the, uh, in the space in the large diagonal wall. So it lets you use that backfill to fill out that wall and make it a perfect square so it lines up with the rest of your cobblestones and fits in perfectly. Because this whole building is built in line with the cobblestones. So we have the 2x2 two two cobblestones, the 4x4 four four cobblestones, the backfill here. We have a small backfill over in front of this small diagonal doing the same thing and then another 2x2 two two here. So the whole building feels like it's set into the ground. Uh, it's one of the many ways you can build with these, scatter style or in line. Over here we have the 61 millimeter stairs uh, leading us up to this big unloading platform. And this is made using 
uh, two of our curved cut out uh, the floral pores, floral, floral floors from our uh, the floral pack. So these uh, there's two in the pack. If you get if you get two packs, you can make a full circle with these. But in this case, we've reversed them and we're using them for these really nice outside curves. These railings make these really elegant railings feel very elven, kind of flowy uh, and inviting. Uh, so we have a pair of those biscuited together um, with the railings on them, and then they have, uh, this is the uh, Seder Moon pole accessory that's uh, decorated up there, and we have the little pole accessory holder uh, from our uh, railings from the scaffolding, and that has the uh, hoist you know, on there, so you could use that for uh, lifting up cargo out of the sea. Um, and then this is our first little instance of the uh, Elven Bows collection. So this is the small uh, post facade. So this one has, uh, has a single peg here. So in this case, we've turned it sideways and stuck it into the uh, biscuit slots. On the edge of the biscuit slots, there's little spots for pull accessory holes. So we have it in there, turned sideways. Uh, and then you see we have another pair over here. So this is the, traditionally how they're used. You pop them into the corner holes in the corner post, the pull accessory hole, uh, and they can decorate up your uh, your corner posts, we have a pair of them there, but you can also use them sideways and we can use them diagonally up on the, uh, on the top. Uh, we also have the uh, two inch railing biscuit in here, so the railing flows really nicely, the curved railing into the straight railing. Uh, to get our way on up here, we're using, we have the 25 millimeter stairs are biscuited into the side of the uh, floral, and then uh, we have the, this is the stair pillar same stair, stair pillar we're using to hold this up. Uh, that stair pillar and the 38 millimeter stairs there get us a nice little way up. Uh, and we're doing that same gag here. Stair pillar and 38 millimeter stairs to feed us onto this. We have, this is the uh, corner railing platform biscuited right to the side of the, uh, the building. Uh, and it's got the 25 millimeter stairs biscuited into it. So it's a nice little transition up. Oh, and you can see here all of the corner posts in the building uh, that we're using on the exterior ones are all the uh, beautiful rosette ones. So we have this nice little carved rosette. So there's this sort of elegance dripping off this building at every turn. Speaking of elegant, we have the elegant door with a little, uh, has a little sculpted in green uh, halfling or gnome circular door sculpted in. The main door is actually hinged, this door hinged, but then there's a little sculpted bonus door in the door uh, for courtesy door for the smaller folk. We have a magnetic tool rack, just uh, pushed up against the wall. It's not actually held with magnets right now. It's just pressure fit up against the wall. And then we have our next piece in the Elven Bows collection. This is the biscuit insert. So this one has a pair of biscuits baked into the back of it so it can slot right into uh, the biscuit holes on a uh, floor, like in this case. And you can also rotate it out. Further up, we're going to uh, turn it upside down also. So it works. It flows beautifully either way. Uh, working our way up, we're using the uh, we're using the green circles window panes. So kind of doubling down on the green everywhere, right? Green green window panes, green doors, green roofs, uh, make it green across the boards. Coming up to the what is it? One, two, three, fourth floor here. We've got uh, two of the narrow scaffolding platforms biscuited right to the uh, side of the uh, building, and then they, we're using the railings uh, in the biscuit holes on those to make a, uh, a nice narrow balcony. A uh, great place to watch the workers doing their work from here, supervise. Uh, we're using the narrow, uh, the regular rustic shutters there with the, uh, the green window pane in there. And then another instance of our, uh, the Elven Bows uh, biscuit insert up there. And we have the little the rustic door uh, to get us in here. Uh, we've also put the, uh, the little rivet, uh, wood rivet biscuit hole fillers on the side of this floor to elegant it up a little bit more. And then speaking of elegant, we're coming on up to this next level. We have, these are the, uh, this is the main facade from the Elven Bows collection. Uh, so this is the, the pole accessory holes for this are here and here. Uh, normally it's upside down right now. So normally you would, uh, you'd pop it in on the top of the rosettes and it would sit the other way. But Eli cleverly designed these so they would flow beautifully either right side up or upside down. So in this case, we wanted it to kind of hang like it was hanging from the roof. Uh, so we flipped it up and then it kind of extends up over the floor above it uh, and just looks, it looks gorgeous every which way. It's really neat intertwining uh, vines and leaves that he's done. It's just, it's just beautiful. And it's also a fun one. If you wanted to put a pop of color on it or something, you could, uh, you could pop a little color on those leaves if you wanted. 
Uh, we, just, we wanted to keep them relatively neutral so they'd work with everything, but they are maybe begging for a little bit of color. Uh, over here, we have uh, this open air area. So we were trying to have a lot of bits that were open to the elements. Uh, and it, what's nice is this exposes the parquet floor. So all the floors on the inside are the extra elegant parquet floors. And we'll, we'll open it up and look inside when we get around the outside. Uh, but you can see it visible here. And we're using the banister corner posts out here to create this lofted open air area. Uh, these kind of form railings, but generally it's railing free. Um, so hopefully you're a dexterous elf and you won't fall off the side. Uh, we're also using a pair of the, uh, the little post facades here, same thing, turned sideways, popped into the biscuit holes on your side there uh, to help contain, continue the elegance all the way around the platform. Uh, moving our way up, we're using um, four of these straight roofs here in green uh, with the four inch uh, soffit peak over there, gives it beautiful, elegant overhang. Uh, and then we're topping that with, this is the cupola piece, which is popped right on top. Uh, and that's got more of those banister corner posts to make another little open air cupola here, a little like steeple area. Uh, it's got the two inch peak roof on top and that is pop topped with the uh, roof ridge for the extra little bit of elegance, the little cherry on top. Uh, we've got once again, the little rivets, uh, biscuit hole fillers have popped in there, uh, more places that you could lash things to it uh, and more uh, roof ridges yonder. Uh, and then on the edge of the roof here, we're using the roofs have the holes in them to attach the, uh, the soffits. So in this case, we're using these same uh, little post, the elven bow uh, post facades, and we're popping those into the holes that were designed to hold the soffits. They can also hold these, so we have nice, they're using these diagonally, we're using them horizontally, and we're using them vertically. So everywhere you go, there's just beautiful sculpted, uh, or you, elven sculpted detail swirling its way up the building. Um, the roof here is more of the straight, uh, for the straight roofs, it's topped with the, uh, the LED dormer window which has a little flickering light going on in there. Uh, and uh, it has the open rustic shutters and the same green window panes there. We're using the four inch peak over here. Uh, so it overhangs out this way. And we've actually put an extra floor. So there's another floor in here on top of, uh, on top of this room. There's a floor here so that we could use the biscuit, the oven bows biscuit insert. And this time it's uh, rotated downward. So this is facing downward. So it has a kind of nice hang off the uh, roof line. And then coming up to the roof line, we have this 61 millimeter stairs coming up to, this is a two inch scaffolding platform, which is pegged right to the roof, so it's super secure. It's got a couple of the two inch railings pegged into it on either side. Uh, and then over here we have four, the diagonal platforms all biscuited together, and then that's biscuited right into uh, the two inch platform, so it's super secure because this is a spot where you want to land your griffin or your pegasus or your dragon or wyvern or whatever flying mount uh, you have can land here. Perfect for aerial deliveries or messengers um, or just mostly looking cool uh, because who doesn't need a landing pad on their roof? Uh, we have the rivets. Uh, once again, the wood rivet, biscuit hole fillers are there. So that's a place you could tether your, uh, your flying mount if you wanted to while you went in to go uh, get the news from inside the trading post. Uh, this side here, we've got the elven bows, uh, biscuit fillers on the bottom on floor level, big double high solid walls, elven bows on the top of those, just those are the facades uh, biscuited right to the double high posts. That flows up into, this is a pair of the diagonals biscuited to the sides. So this is like the lower portion of the poet's nook. And then uh, we have a two by four parquet floor. Once again, biscuited to the side of the building with a balcony biscuited right to that. Um, and then it's got the uh, pair of hip roofs over it uh, to roof that off and it makes a nice little outdoor area and then more uh, elven bows going all the way up into four inch gable peak. All right, let's go around to the other side and look at the, uh, the actual like front side of the building. This is the back side where it gets to see the front side that faces the street over here. Let's see what's going on over there. All right, so we spun this thing around, and now this is, this is technically the front of the building, right? The rest of the city would be here. That's the back where the, the uh, ocean and the docks are. This would be the front. Uh, if, you have, um, if you have downtown dockside, you could build that right out against this. 
uh, or if you have uh, Market Square, you could this would flow really nicely into Market Square. But from here, you can see uh, there's we've got a terrain tray underneath there. It's up on the one inch cobblestone risers, uh, and then up on the uh, sea walls here. And then we're building in line. This uh, prototype is a little the edge is a little messy, but you can see with the things we're building in line. These are the two by two cobblestones uh, just built in line there. And if you didn't want to build this building in line, if you wanted to place it scatter style on something, we have uh, the bunch of the small stair stairs, so you can put like steps all the way around. It looks really nice, kind of feeding into uh, this entry area. So this entry area is a two by four parquet floor there with the uh, it's got the tall, the double high corner posts going up, so it makes it a really nice open air. Uh, flowy area, right? We're trying to do as much open air flowy stuff as we can. Uh, and then it's got the elven bows uh, wall facade there, just attaching on the two corner posts with no wall in it. So it makes it a really nice flow. And then it's got the, the small uh, facade, uh, post facade up there too. And that feeds into, we have that elegant door and the uh, and more elven bows. Uh, this is the biscuit hole filler above the door. And then that feeds right up into, there's a little lantern, right? We've got our gothic lantern in there to create some nice light. Uh, and we're using the window boxes with the planters in them there to have um, little splashes of some greenery, some inviting flowers at the front uh, as you enter in the main entrance of the, uh, the trading post here. Uh, on the side over here, we have, we wanted to get the big double high doors here, right? So this, these are the big, huge double doors where you could get your back your carts in, went on. This could be the, the main storeroom or showroom or uh, warehouse area of the trading post. So we've got the double high posts, the big double high double door walls. And those double doors, they'll, they'll be hinged and you can swap them out with any of your double doors that you have from Dungeon Doom onward. Um, and then above that, we have more elven bows uh, and another of the, uh, the elven bows, the post facade and the whole wall facade there. Uh, and then those continue around on the other side. Uh, up here, we've taken the large diagonal, pop the corner post in there, throw, there's a window wall in here, uh, and then put the dangle room in here with the green window pane, so it's really a nice little overhanging parapet. And then instead of using the extension, we didn't use the extension, we could have, you could put the extension on and pop it up, but I kind of wanted the roofs to all flow together into one thing. So uh, we have the wizard hat roof, the front half, the transition half, and then the backfill feeding into uh, the green roofs, we have a uh, couple of straights and a hip, uh, and then that flows up into a cupola with a little, uh, it's the rivet, wood rivet uh, biscuit hole filler, and then into the two inch peak roof with a uh, roof ridge on that. So just trying to make some really neat flowy geometry sort of working its way up the building. So the idea is it should be a beautiful visual journey going up the building the way the elves intended it. Uh, and then over this one, to continue uh, over the entryway, to continue that flow up, we have the big four-inch soffit peak there uh, and it's biscuited to a pair of the uh, valley roofs, and then it's, it's topped off with the uh, roof ridge end piece for an extra flourish, uh, and then a single soffit over there to give it a nice little overhang. Um, above this, we have, maybe I went a little too crazy with the elven bows. We've got, we've got the biscuit filler oven bows, into the wall facade, into another biscuit filler. Uh, so it's like, it's all the elven sculpting you could ever want in one place. Uh, and what's neat here is Eli sculpted these so that these would fit together. Uh, they'd nestle together really beautifully uh, if built just like this. So this was as intended. Um, so it's a really nice uh, sort of, and however you put these things together, they're gonna just flow and give elven grace to whatever building they're on. Uh, over here on the side, uh, we have LED wall, on the bottom to get some light at the uh, street level. The uh, four inch corbel row helping hold up. This is the bay window biscuited right to the side. And then above, this is something people have been asking about during the campaign, uh, is we have the, half the wizard hat roof biscuited inside the building on top of the uh, bay window. So it's a nice little cap to the bay window and flows right up the side of the building really nicely into, there's a little nook here in the, uh, the elven bows uh, wall facade, so it fits in really nicely over there. And then all flows on up to our open air area. More of our green window panes, more of our uh, elven bows bits. And then over here, I don't know if we talked about on the other side, we have, this is a corner railing biscuited to the side of the cupola with a narrow railing on it. And then we have the little railing pole accessory on there 
with the spyglass. So it's the perfect place to uh, look out for the ships coming into harbor and the like. Or spot if there's a, you know, a flying a messenger that's going to come and land on the uh, landing pad. You can spot them from the spyglass. All right, let's tear the roof off this thing and see what's inside. So because things are biscuited together, it's pretty easy to lift off chunks. So we're taking the uh, landing pad. We're going to fly this thing out. There's one unit. Uh, first thing to note, uh, throughout this thing, we're, we didn't have enough 4x4 parquet floors pro prototypes uh, that had biscuit holes. Um, so in a bunch of places, I was using 2x4 floors, a pair of them biscuited together um, to, as proxies for it. So this will actually be a full 4x4 parquet floor. Uh, this floor is purely cosmetic. I used this so that we could put uh, all of these elven boughs um, facade pieces, uh, or I guess these are the biscuit filler pieces, all the way around uh, to decorate up that ridge line of the roof uh, and make it look extra elegant. So it is another building piece you could use for other applications. This upper, uh, upper tower story, nothing in here, good place to look out. It's got windows on all three sides and there's a stair hole going down. Uh, I should note that there aren't stairs inside except at the bottom when we get there. So if you don't see stairs, there aren't stairs. Uh, but there are a bunch of stairs outside you could repurpose. Uh, we're going to pop this thing off, and you'll see what's fun is this, uh, this Elven Bow's wall facade in the flipped upside down overlaps this floor in a really pleasing way. Like Eli did a really nice job of designing the flow of those so it works either upside down or right side up. A little overlap. All right, now we're going to lift off this little crow's nest, all as one unit. All right, on this floor, uh, we have that nice open air area, and this is a full, true 4x4 parquet floor, so that's what the, the full floors will look like. Uh, inside, we're cheating with a pair of, um, a pair of the 2x4s. Uh, we have a nice little LED wall in there, a couple more windows, uh, not much else than that elegant, uh, big, elegant green door to get us in there. And I love the look of these, these banister corner posts when they're exposed. Um, and then these, uh, these uh, roofs, the two hips, are biscuited the side of this thing. So we can lift this thing off as one unit. And if this actually had biscuit holes, we would be able to biscuit this to the other floor, but uh, this one doesn't have biscuits. Not yet. They're, they're prototypes. They will. All right, so now this floor, things are starting to get lively in here. So we have, uh, we have our rustic uh, door. This is how we get out uh, to the balcony. Here. And then we have another, we have an interior door wall here, another one of those rustic door walls. Um, and that gets us out to this little balcony area. So this would be a good place to have like meetings or meditate or elven lunch or whatever, a nice open air spot, but it's cordoned off from the rest of the room, from the rest of the building. Uh, we're using the magnetic wall and the magnetic picture frame here. Uh, and then I realized I should have put the stair hole is, uh, stair hole is here and I should have actually rotated it around uh, 90 degrees and put it here. And these will all be these will all be four by four parquet floors. This one is this one is a two by four. The rest of these will be it's a pair of four by fours. So I was using proxies because I needed all the biscuit holes to hold everything together. And because of that, we can lift that off super cleanly and easily as one unit. Okay, I have these. All right, and we're gonna lift off um, this roof section as one unit. Oh, I broke one. All right, now. Here, the layout is really starting to get lively. So we've got our elegant door to get us down these steps to get down to the, uh, this beautiful curved loading dock. Uh, we've got our uh, two diagonals, the, little, the uh, little poet's nook biscuited on the side there, so we have a nice way it juts out. And then we have another interior uh, wall here using the, uh, the rustic door wall to cordon off. This is probably like the office for uh, whoever runs this trading post. She probably sets up shop in here because it's probably the best room in the whole place. It's got the really nice little dangle room nook over there. Uh, then over here we have the uh, magnetic mantel shelf against this wall here and another LED interior LED wall here. So a bunch of interior LEDs to light the, the inside of it. Uh, and then our stair hole down to go, um, stair hole down to go uh, to the next level down. So this one I have in two separate units. This guy flies off. It's really fun to like pick it up in chunks and fly it around. It'd be very satisfying on the game table during actual play. 
Uh, so here we have this upper landing, uh, which has the bay window, a little jet out there, biscuited on another interior LED wall, this nice uh, elegant door going out to the loading dock. Uh, I'm going to pop this off. Now this one has uh, stairs, so these stairs are biscuited onto the side and they go down to this big double high room. Flat that out. Uh, and then let's pop off the loading dock. Expose that. And so we can see what's going on inside, we'll pull this, uh, this double high wall out. All right, so we have this kind of neat shaped room with all the diagonals, so it's a small diagonal and a large diagonal put together with a two by four there. Um, and we could have put a wall, like a wall here or something, but I kind of wanted it to all flow together. But there's a wall here. So there's a door there, a door there. There's a lot of doors to get into this, as I figure, where the workers come and go. A little cabinet in there. Rustic uh, door to get into uh, this main part of the, uh, this is probably like the back storeroom, and then this maybe is like the showroom thing. And we have a, a trap door, the little magnetic uh, freestanding trap door to go down to like maybe there's a basement cellar level whatnot down there. Uh, and this is the main, the main area you would enter through the big double doors or through this the front door. Uh, we've got the uh, magnetic tapestry, the big double high one up on the wall to decorate it up. We're using three of the, uh, the little cabinets against the wall there is once you're shelving and then the magnetic mantle uh, shelf against this magnetic because these big double high walls are all magnetic. Uh, and then over here we've got the uh, magnetic tool rack against this wall. So the inside's got, got a little bit of decor and plenty of room for minis and plenty of room to maneuver around. So hopefully this will inspire you in all the sorts of fun things you can do with the Elven Trading Post and some of the building possibilities that await you. Thanks for watching.